We have immense, vast landscape of different architectural forms. You have different people, you have different architectural styles, and being a local guide help participants of our walks uh, get a sense of the route that we're going to take, and is really useful for tourists and visitors to the city. I'm Simin Patel, and I'm a local guide in Bombay. Neoclassical was Bombay's first kind of state style, but in the 1860s, Bombay was reconfigured. Neo-Gothic was the architectural style chosen for the new city of Bombay. So, undoubtedly, is in some sense the most important style. The most famous was the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Terminus. So this is the Victoria Terminus, now known as the Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus and is the grandest neo-Gothic structure in the city. And you can see the Statue of Progress right on the top of the dome. It was a statue of Queen Victoria under the clock, which has been removed after independence. All the main civic buildings in the city are all neo-Gothic. So in some sense, neo-Gothic was the style that changed Bombay and made Bombay the city that it is. And then in the 1920s and 30s, you have Art Deco coming into Bombay in a huge way. It was the first time Indian architects were deciding a style for the city, and Bombay is now the city with the second largest collection of Art Deco buildings in the world. Art Deco was colorful, Art Deco was playful. It was a style so removed from the colonial style. I think it's a big statement on nationalism and independence. The foundation stone of Liberty Cinema was laid in 1947, the year of Indian independence, as a kind of mark of the new state of the Indian nation. And it's really important that we give this whole landscape of Art Deco enough attention so that it's not demolished. What makes the Oval Maidan and the Oval Precinct unique is that you have two completely different styles facing each other off. Over here on the right, we see um, Bombay, neo-Gothic in all its glory. This is what came up in the 1860s, 1870s. And this was really the raw, the shining glory. There was the oval over here, there was grass, and then there was the sea. This land had been reclaimed, and all these new structures came on it, effectively blocking the view that these neo-Gothic structures once had of the sea. Gateway of India is actually a really successful example of Indo-Sarsenic style in Bombay, which is kind of rare because all the other Indo-Sarsenic buildings in the city are kind of blocked by really big neo-Gothic structures. It's a grand gesture of, of welcoming visitors to the city. I think the cosmopolitanism of the city makes it really special because Bombay is decidedly different from other parts of the world. We have people from different backgrounds that came and sort of made Bombay from the early 1800s. That's a trend that continues till today. Well, you have different architectural styles, different kinds of people, and that's really the most interesting thing about the city.